Hey there, this is a video walkthrough of the calculating net pay activity, which can be found on Teachers Pay Teachers under the Phi Educator um, store. And I'll have that linked in the description below. So what we're going to do, each student is going to get one of the different characters and there are several available. So we have a psychotherapist, we have someone working in a store as a manager, we have an architect, we have a nurse, etc. So they're all going to have a little story that goes with them. Um, and they're going to have a salary, they're going to have a state that they're living and working in, and they're going to have something about their maybe child status or how are their, how they are filing. Um, so there's quite a variety that your student could get depending on which worksheet you do. Now, if you're doing this for the first time, I would recommend they all work on the same worksheet and then maybe the second time around, give them one of the other ones to practice with. But the nice thing is that you could do a lot of practice in this as a whole class. You could give everyone a different one or maybe two kids in your class have the same one, they have to pair up on it. So you can get a lot of um, different ways of approaching this. So what I wanna do for you today is actually go through how to complete the activity from start to finish. So how do you input the numbers? How do you calculate the next part and so on? So the first part, we've got gross pay. This is the amount of money that the person earns. If I go over to the story, I can see that this person has a salary of 58,000, so up in the top goes 58,000. Medicare is 1.45, so I'm gonna take that 58,000 and multiply by 1.45%, and that'll give me my uh, Medicare allowance. So 58,000 times 0 0.0145, and that's $841. Social Security, you go back to that 58,000 again, so you don't subtract what you've already paid in Medicare. So you go back to 58,000, multiply by 0 0.062, and that's 3,596. Sorry, digital tablet handwriting is not the best. Standard deduction, this is something that will change every year. So make sure you're checking the most recent tax years. If you're using this resource and it's not 2021 tax year, just know that this may have changed for a future tax year. Um, if you check out my Teachers Pay Teacher store, I publish a new one every year with the updated tax information. If I can go to the back side of this document and find the standard deduction for 2021 filing single is $12,550. So I can back up here and $12,550. I'm checking my story again. So I'm filing single. I'm in Maryland. So I'm going to check the Maryland state tax tables for later. And I've got Social Security, Medicare. Um, I'm paying $8,700 into a Roth 401k. So remember, Roth is an after tax contribution. So this will not impact your taxes. So I'm going to go down to the Roth 401k contribution at the end of the document, I'm just going to plug in that 8,700 now so I don't forget about it. That means there's a $0 traditional contribution. Federal taxable income. This is gross pay minus your standard deduction and your traditional 401k deduction. You do not subtract your Medicare or Social Security. This is something that um, you're being taxed on your actual income. Medicare or Social Security is a different income tax. So I got 58,000 minus 12,550 and there's no traditional contribution. So my taxable federal taxable income, I should say, is 45,450. So this is when you go to do your tax tables. So we're gonna look at the federal income tax tables in a second. This is what you will be using to calculate your federal income tax obligation. So common misconception would be to take gross pay and subtract Medicare or Social Security. You do not do that. You just take the standard deduction out. And then if there is a traditional 401k deduction, that will come out here as well. Real life taxes, there are more deductions and credits that might come into play that might impact your taxable income, particularly if you itemize your deductions versus taking the standard deduction. This is just meant to be a kind of a simplified um, version of how federal income tax and state income tax works. So if you're getting questions from your students about some of those other things, just tell them like either consult their family's accountant, check out Google, you may be a source of information as well, but just let them know like this is a more simplified pared down version of what a tax return might look like. Okay, so we take that $45,450 and this is gonna be our federal income tax, um, taxable income. 
So we go to the following page where you've got the federal income tax rates for 2021. So that's the blue chart over here. And $40,450 or $45,000, sorry, $450 would be coming in just between the 22 and 24% tax break. Now, how I know that it's the amount you earn taxable income between 40,526 to 86,000. So our 45,000 is coming in here. So we're going to fill up the 10% bracket. We're going to fill up the 12 and then we're going to partially fill the 22. So that's how our federal income tax system works. You're going to have brackets that when you fill up one, you then move into the next one. So some of your money will be taxed at 10%, some at 12, and then the remaining part will be taxed at 22. And that's a really important point to get across to your students that you don't, when you move up a tax bracket, it's not the case that all of your money is going to be taxed at that amount. It's just the part that moved into that new bracket. Okay, so 10% of the first 9950 is going to be $950. So then you can say, all right, I have taxed that first 9,950. So you take your 45,450, subtract 9,950 from it. So I had, I'm just gonna write it in here so you can see it. 45, um, what was it, 450, 450. 45, 450 minus 9,950, and I've got 35, 500 left. So that is going to be from the 9,951 to the 40,000 mark is going to be taxed at 12%. So 40,000 minus 9,950, which has already been taxed. So we got 40,525 minus 9,950. So we're going to tax 30,000 and $575 at 12%. So you multiply that by 0.12. So 30,575 times 0.12, and that's 3,669. So the nice thing about grading this is that you will be able to kind of see what the first bracket is. It should be the same for everyone. Same thing for the second if we're filling it up. And it's only the last bracket where you're going to have to calculate a partial amount that you'll be like, okay, this is where the difference maker is. Um, and it's what's going to be able to tell you, like, do they know what they're talking about or not? So in the third, the 22% bracket, we had $45,450 of taxable income. We've already taxed 40525 so I'm seeing that number right here at the end of the 12% bracket. So that means there's $4,925 left that we haven't taxed yet, and that's going to be taxed at the 22% bracket. So 4925 times 0.22, that's 1083 0.5. There's no additional brackets. That would just be if we had a very high income, we filled that 22% bracket and we went into some of the higher ones. It can be a fun exercise to do this with your students where you give them like a $1 million salary and ask them like, what would the taxes be on that? Um, but not most, most of our um, worksheets here will not use that or they'll just go one bracket higher. They won't go multiple brackets. Child tax credit, there's none for this person, but if you go down, um, you'll find some examples where there are kids involved. So let's see, this person has one federal tax credit. So you would go into your tax table, look for the child tax credit, see what age they were, and then input the correct numbers. So like this person is child over six. So I would be putting 3000 in for the child tax credit for this person, but none in our example which is here, our psychotherapist. So I've got $0 going in here. So total federal income tax is add these three together. So it does not include your FICA taxes. So we got 950 plus 3669 plus that 108350. 
and that is $5,702.50. So that is our total federal income tax liability. So I hop over here and I can just copy that number over. 5702.50, and actually I can do Social Security, Medicare, and gross income while I'm here. So 58,000 even. Medicare was 841. And then 3596. And now we got Maryland State. So the example um, that I've given you is for Maryland. There's others for Virginia. In coming years, uh, hopefully this coming year, I'm going to add in other states as well. So keep an eye out for that. But for now, it's just Maryland and Virginia. I like both of those because they, again, have graduated income tax rates as well, as opposed to a flat tax or one of the states that does not have a state income tax. So I wanted my students calculating state tax. Um, if you are lucky enough to live in a state that does not have state income tax, um, you know, maybe consider just crossing this part out and just saying, like, ignore the state part if you want, or have them go through it anyway. They may end up living in one of these states in the future. All right, so every state has its own standard deduction and then its own tax brackets if they have a state tax. So I'm talking about a person in Maryland, so I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna look at the Maryland taxes. So Maryland also has a standard deduction of 2350. You can see it down on the bottom of the screen here in the black table. So standard deduction for Maryland for single and then married filing joint, and then Virginia is there as well. So 2350 is what I get to deduct from my taxes before I start, so 2350. Now this is from my gross income. So I'm going back to that original number of 58,000. So the federal government will look at your 58,000, say they want a slice, and then Maryland or Virginia or whatever your state is, is gonna say that too. So I've got 58,000 and I'm gonna take away that standard deduction. There's nothing else really here. Um, some exceptions to this would be like, if you have a state 529 plan, and you're allowed to do state tax deductions for that, but that's not part of this example. So let's not get too complicated for the kids. Two, three, five, zero. So that would be $55,650. And then Maryland's system is actually quite simple. It's like the first $1,000 is taxed at 2%. So that's $20. The next $1,000 is taxed at 3%, that's $30. And then the next $1,000 is taxed at 4%, that's $40. So like almost everyone in Maryland, unless you have a very low income. So some of our teens, if they're talking about their own finances, might not have much for Maryland state income tax, but you know, everyone's pretty much going to pay 90 bucks and then start really paying because the next bracket is from 3,000 to 100,000, which is where the majority of people would probably fall. So I got... 2%, 3%, 4%, so that's 20, 30, 40. And then the fourth bracket is at 4.75%. And we've taxed the first $3,000, we need to tax the rest. So I've got $55,650 is my taxable income for Maryland. I've already taxed the first 3,000. So subtract 3,000 from that number. So there's $52,650 of income left to be taxed. And that's going to be taxed all at 4.75% because I don't go into the 5% bracket. So times 0 0.0475 is 2,500. And then I've got 0.875. So to the nearest cent, that would be 0.88. No additional brackets, so I can leave that one blank. Add it all together. So just add 90 to that last number that you got. And that's 2590. Oops. So 2590 and then 0.88. then now you're ready to kind of do that final worksheet 
So what we're going to have now is we're going to get net income, which is how much you've made after taxes, deductions, and then we're going to divide it over the number of paychecks that we receive in a year. So we've got that starting salary, 58000 We had $841 in Medicare tax. We had $3,596 in Social Security. We had $5,702.50 in federal income tax and $2,590.88 in state income tax. So that leaves me with $45,269.62. So that's a 6 2 at the end there. Apologies for the bad handwriting again. We make a Roth 401k contribution of 8,700. So remember this is an after tax contribution. Roth contributions will go in after tax, but then all of the growth that you um, get is tax free. So when it comes to taking the money out later in life, you don't owe any taxes on that. That is gonna be your income, but it's gonna be treated as net income that you've already paid your taxes on it. So I'm gonna subtract the 8,700 from my remaining income because that's income that we're not going to get into our paycheck. That's something that our employer will be putting aside for us because it's a 401k as opposed to an IRA. Okay, so that means my true net income is going to be 36569 and then 62 cents. Now we're going to divide by the number of paychecks in a year, and that's up in our story again. So we've got paid semi-monthly. So that means we're going to get paid two times a month, which means we get 24 paychecks. So 24 would be my number down here. So I'm going to divide this number by 24. So each paycheck would be $1,523. And I'm getting 0.73417. So rounded to the nearest cent would be 0.73. But I mean, I would take 0.74 as well if my students were doing this. Because like what would happen in reality is that you know every other paycheck, one would be 0.73, one would be 0.74 until it balanced out at the end. Okay, that's pretty much it. It's the same thing for Virginia. Um, Virginia's um, state income tax rate is slightly different. So the first $3,000 are taxed at 2%, the next $2,000 at 3%. So those are both $60. And then you've got $12,000 taxed at 5%. And then everything over that is just taxed at 5.75%. So like Virginia is a more expensive state for state income tax. If you are in a higher tax bracket and just in general, you'll see more state income tax um, for Virginia than you will for Maryland. Um, but it depends on the state. I'm, I am planning on adding more states in. So if you have any questions, please do send me an email. The at gmail.com is a great place to reach me. And I hope you enjoy the resource.